Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As introduced, my name is Yongju Che. I'm the director of pre-submission consultation at NIFDS of MFDS. Well, this year again, we are providing the training session uh, online, but fortunately, this year we have small number of the participants on site. So it is really good to see some of the audience in person, and I strongly expect to have a on-site training session to, uh, next year. As introduced, the training on the ICH guideline has been four years. We started the training session in 2018, and last year, although it was the online training session there were a lot of audience participated online so as a person who prepared for the training session i really appreciate your uh, participation and attention and before we start the training session in earnest so i'd like to talk about a brief introduction of ich itself so i will present on the ich activities and also the implementation status of ich guideline in korea so this is the agenda first of all i will talk about the ich uh, activities in general general and then the, uh, i will talk about the process for guideline development and then that will be followed by the expert working group or ewz and what uh, MFDS is doing as a part of the EWG. And lastly, I will talk about MFDS implementation activity in Korea. So uh, I will briefly tell you about the ICH organization and competition. And ICH represents the International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. But usually, we usually uh, refer to the first part of the full name, uh, the International Council for Harmonization. However, we have to pay attention to the later part of the full name, Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. This is the full name of the ICH, and as the name represents, in managing the pharmaceutical safety, the technical requirements and the scientific requirements are discussed and the guidelines for that requirements are established by the ICH. And in order to have the harmonization, there are four areas uh, that are discussed. Uh, the multidisciplinary efficacy, safety, and quality, and guidelines needed for these four domains are developed by ICH. When it comes to the purpose of the ICH, as you can see on the slide, is to promote the uh, public health through international harmonization so that we can prevent the unnecessary duplication of clinical trials and PMS. By having the harmonized requirement, it can prevent countries from doing or making unnecessary duplication in their works. And also, the unnecessary animal studies can be uh, reduced. If you look at the ICH organizational structure, you can see that there is an assembly and management assembly, uh, committee. And importantly, the actual development of the guideline uh, is done by working groups. QSEM, the four domains have different working groups. The assembly is the final decision-making body. So the older members are participating in the assembly uh, to review and endorse the uh, revision to the uh, guideline and the establishment of the guideline and financial matters. But at the same time, the actual operation of the organization is done by the uh, management committee. Uh, the administrative affairs and financial affairs are uh, attended by the management committee. And also the process of establishing or revising the guidelines, that process is also discussed by the uh, management committee. And the agenda for the assembly is also set by the uh, management committee. We have the observers and the members of the ICH. There are 18 members of ICH and 33 observers. And if you look at more closely, 
there are some groups of the members. As you can see from here, we do have a founding members. The founding members are the members who contributed to the establishment of ICH. Uh, Europe and uh, the U.S. regulatory affair uh, bodies and also the pharmaceutical industry associations of those regions are the founding members. And Ca uh, Health Canada and Swiss Medic are the standing members. And more recently, the ICH expanded its membership by changing its charter. And now we have more members than before. And Korea became the one of the member at the time. So as you can see from the slide, the for the regulatory body, uh, Korea, Brazil, Singapore, and China, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, and Turkey's uh, regulatory bodies are the members. And also the pharmaceutical associations, including Bio, Global uh, Self-Care, uh, Generic Bio, similar associations are all the uh, members. And ICH also has uh, 33 observers. Standing observers include IFP, MA, and WHO. And also the regulatory bodies and the regional uh, representative bodies. And the, uh, the pharmaceutical industry organizations are also observers. As I said, the operation of the body is done by the uh, management committee. The management committee uh, also has its own members. And as you can see from here, the standing MC members. These are the standing members. And also there are elected members and observers, standing observers. So here, the standing members are the members, kind of a permanent members. And for the elected members, the members need to be elected. And for the standing MC members, as I said, the founding members of the ICH and also the standing members of the ICH, which include the regulatory body of the European continent and EU and Health Canada and Swissmatic and WHO and uh, the uh, Pharma. And for the elected member uh, members of the MC includes the elected uh, members from the ICH members. Um, the qualifications need to be met in order to be uh, eligible for the election. And as you can see from here, MFDS is a one of the elected MC members, and it also has China and uh, Singapore and Brazil as elected MC members and from the industry association BIO, IGBA are the elected MC members. And uh, for the elected MC members, the term is three years. And these are the topics of the ICH uh, guidelines, quality, safety, efficacy, and multidisciplinary. Korea started its ICH participation in 2007, and as you can see from here, we serve as the deputy representative of APEC region that was the start for the Korea uh, to participate ICH activities. And from 2008 and 9, uh, we participated uh, as the regulatory body and also the, rep uh, the deputy representative of APEC. So we had a two hats. And afterwards, Every year, there are two meetings of the ICH, and Korea continuously participate in those meetings. And we also became the a part of the Expert Working Group, or EWGs. So we were heavily involved in the establishment of the ICH guidelines. ICH was established in 1997, so the founding members were leading uh, the group, but later on, the ICH expanded its membership. So ICH was registered as a non-profit organization under the, uh, in accordance with the Switzerland law, so the membership was able to be expanded. 
And as the sixth uh, member, Korea became the member of the ICH in 2016. And in 2018, we became the elected management committee member. So starting from 2018, we uh, serve as the uh, management committee member for three years. And once again, we are re-elected as the member of the management committee this year. Then what is the process for the ICH guideline to be developed? As for the ICH guideline development, you can see that there is a former ICH procedure from step one to step five. And if you look at in more detail that procedure, there are some steps. As you can see here, the new guideline development that is done by EWG. And after the development of a new guideline, the guideline need to be implemented. And there should be the Q&A to support the implementation. And also there should be some trainings. So that is done by the implementation working group. And as we develop and use the guideline, sometimes we need to revise it or sometimes we need to update it. So there is a revision procedure and maintenance procedure and that are also done by the EWG or the expert working group. And sometimes errors need to be corrected. And when time arrives, the guideline need to be withdrawn if it is not in need anymore. So this is the, the new guideline development procedure. We have five steps. Before step one, however, we do have the pre-step one here. When people uh, wanted to develop a new guideline, then a new topic need to be discussed. So all ICH members and observers can submit topic proposals like once a year. So topics for new guidelines can be submitted by all members and observers. And then those topic proposals will be reviewed by uh, ICH uh, management committee or sometimes the existing guideline may be needed uh, to be revised and that can be also proposed. Then the member or observer who raised the topic or submitted the topic can have an opportunity to present and explain its own proposal. Then the management committee listen to that uh, presentation and have discussion. and this, uh, discuss uh, which topic need to be developed into a new guideline. And after that discussion, the uh, management committee can make a proposal to the ICH assembly. Then about the new topic, the ICH assembly will decide on that topic. Then there is an informal working group to be formed in order to discuss the topic before the uh, EWG is formulated. That informal uh, working group will discuss what to be included in the uh, new guidelines. So they will come up with the concept paper and business plan. Then afterwards, the management committee will review that concept paper and business plan and then adopt them. And then comes to the stage where the ICH assembly will review it again and make a decision with, on whether this guideline will be developed or not and whether this revision will be pursued or not. And then uh, the working group the EWG or IWG will be established. That's the pre-step uh, one. And that is followed by step one to step five. At the step one, the concept paper, in accordance with the concept paper, the guideline will be uh, developed and EWG members got together to discuss what to be included in the guideline. And at step two, 
With a draft guideline, the consensus will be sought after, and at step three, the, the draft will be open to the public in order to have the public consultation. Then there will be discussion on that public consultation and feedback so that uh, the draft uh, guideline will be uh, sophisticated. And step four, there will be adoption of the guideline, and step five will be implementation of that guideline. As you can see on the slide at the step one, the technical document, the content in the concept paper will be formulated into the draft of the technical document. So the working group will prepare a consensus draft of the technical document. And that draft is the one that is discussed by the experts in the working group and therefore it needs to be uh, collecting the opinion from other members of the ICH and that is the step two and there are two sub steps there are step 2a the ICH members all the members are invited to present their opinion that includes the regulatory uh, members and the industry association members so those members will discuss and then endorse the technical document. That's the step 2A. So the signatures from the members need to be obtained. And at step 2B, particularly the, the regulatory members of the ICH assembly will be invited uh, to review the technical document again and endorse the draft guideline. That is because the implementation of the guideline will be done by the regulatory bodies and therefore, although they reviewed the document at the step 2A, once again, the regulatory members are invited to endorse the draft guideline again. And next comes the public consultation at step 3. So the draft guideline will be uh, open to the public and this is really important step. It is as much important as the uh, making or developing the guideline itself. We need to collect, the ICH needs to collect the opinion from the public and the relevant uh, stakeholders. And if people have a lot of interest in a certain guideline, then there will be a lot more public consultation or the feedback. And that would take some time to adjust them and reflect them. And uh, the old comment will be considered, and then the step four will have the adoption of the finer harmonized guideline at the ICH assembly. And that is followed by the step five, where the members need to implement the guideline. Um, if you visit the ICH website, you can see what guidelines are under development and what guidelines are already developed and what guidelines are under discussion. So you can see uh, those progress on different types of the guidelines. And I will share later on the MFDS, uh, NIFDS website also has the same information on our website. And I will talk about next the EWG activities, which is about the development of the uh, guidelines. As for the uh, EWG, there are 34 working groups. Discussion group, four discussion groups are also included in the number 34. So if you look at expert working group only, then there are 30 EWG plus four discussion group. 759 technical experts are, are participating in those groups. And if you look at that, as you can see here, founding and standing members, the founding members from the establishment of the ICH are more active, are quite active in the working group. More than a half of the experts are from founding and standing members. And also there are the experts from the member countries or the member bodies and observers. And MFDS is currently participating in 16 EWGs. 
And if you include uh, the activities of the EWG where the uh, revision or the establishment of the guidelines activities were done, MFDS have joined 30 groups. As I said, there are about 30 expert working groups, and of that, MFDS is participating in 16 uh, working expert working groups. And you can see from the table that uh, the what EWG, uh, the MFDS is working on, and where that activity stays in terms of the step. So if you have any uh, comments to uh, make, then you can uh, ask us to share that. As you can see here, this is the quality related EWG, then safety, seven and eight, and efficacy and uh, multidisciplinary domain. And what you see on slide is the EWG that MFDS is not participating. The guideline development activities are being done uh, with those EWG. So you can uh, post your opinion uh, to these activities too. So if you have anything in your mind that these kind of things need to be included in the uh, guideline or this should be the direction for the guideline, you can, uh, you, uh, you can uh, share the, your opinion with us so that that can be conveyed to the ICH. This is the discussion group. This does not uh, deal with a topic, specific topic issues, but those discussion groups have in-depth discussion on a wider a, or broader range of issues. As you can see here, we have uh, the ICH has four discussion groups, including quality, generics, and others. And from now on, I'd like to talk about MFDS, gui ICH guideline implementation. Last year, actually, I shared this information, and you can see that there is an improvement out of uh, 110 guidelines. Last year, it was 82%, now 92% for the in the process of develop, uh, implementation, 5% uh, to 7.6%. Uh, and for the not yet implemented, it has been dropped from 13% of last year to 2.2% this year. So overall 10% improvement. For the quality domain, as you can see, Q12, a pharmaceutical product lifecycle management guideline is in the process of implementation. And for the safety, not yet implemented include S5R3 and S11. For efficacy, three guidelines are in the process of implementation, which include E2F, E2BR3 Q&As, and E9R1. For multidisciplinary domain, three uh, guidelines are in the process of implementation, which include M8, M9, and M9 Q&As. And the implementation plans for those guidelines will be shared. And as you can see here, the guidelines which are in the process of implementation or not yet implemented, you can see that this year, uh, end of, by end of this year, most of the um, guidelines in the process of the implementation will be completed in terms of the implementation and uh, not yet implemented for them uh, next year, end of next year would be our planned uh, deadline. And if you visit NIFDS website, you can find a page where you can see our activities, MFDS and NIFDS activities in relation to the ICH. ICH activities, ICH guideline, both in Korean and English versions, and ICH updates. And also, more importantly, MFDS participation in EWG activities. And here, you can see the guidelines, which are at the step three for public consultation. And here, you can provide your opinion, or you can uh, contact us at the pre-submission uh, division. Um, this 
is the plan for the uh, management committee of the ICH activity. We are still in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and actually, this is the assembly. Uh, the assembly of the ICH or the management committee is being held at this moment. Uh, we plan to have a meeting in the later half of next year in Incheon, but we're not yet decided whether we go for online or face-to-face -face or hybrid meeting. If we are able to host the meeting, then it would be a great opportunity for us to pay more attention to the ICH activities. This is my last slide. Setting and establishing the uh, guidelines and harmonizing those uh, guidelines, that is a very important activity and that requires active involvement from MFDS and also the industry. And as a regulatory body, MFDS is strengthening its cooperation with other regulatory bodies and it will increase the national credibility and in the process we can accommodate the local industries or, or situation or the local situation of Korea to the development of the guideline and this will of course will help us and help the industry to move into the overseas market and the uh, products the drug products of course will have better efficacy and better safety delivering a better fit to the public. So the MFDS will continue to strengthen uh, its international cooperation. But at the same time, I kindly ask people in industry to pay more attention to the activities of the MFDS and also the ICH and try to uh, accommodate the guideline in your practice. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, there is a question from the online participants. When you say the implementation, what is the uh, the standard or the what is the yardstick to say uh, that guideline is implemented? When we say the guideline is implemented, it means that the guideline is followed. In guideline, there are many uh, requirements set. So whether it's a regulatory body or the industry, the, uh, the, the players are actually following the requirements. And those requirements are, can be included in the law or the relevant regulations. And then the, whether it's a regulatory body or the uh, industry, uh, it is only natural for them to follow that. And of course, the MFDS can provide in more, uh, the more detailed than specific uh, details in a separate document as a notice. And that will help the industry to follow the guideline. Thank you very much. Because of the time constraint, we are not able to answer and accommodate all the questions. I kindly ask your kind understanding, but you can still leave your questions in the website and the responses will be shared later on on the website. Once again, I'd like to appreciate Yongju Che from MFDS for the presentation. Thank you.